All right, let's look at some more poetry here. Allen Ginsberg, notable poet of the Beat Generation. Maybe you've seen the movie Howl, um, prototypical of this, po of this poetry. His, this poem is an open verse, highly controversial piece written in first person. So that first person is very important for a lot of this type of writing. Um, so here's a picture from here. He's a bookstore owner was uh, offered to publish. It was uh, a bookstore owner who was offered to publish was taken to court for obscenity charges. He went to the present public presentation of this, and he's like, "We have to publish this." But later, uh, you know, the, the court let it go. So it's just very, it's you know, that's kind of interesting because it just shows how extreme this was for the times. Uh, so here's an excerpt of Howell. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, driving themselves. Uh, through the Negro streets of dawn looking for an angry fix, angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo of the machinery at night. Very long, long verses here. Look at this one. Um, a lot of different points brought up in here. Who passes through universities with radiant, cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas and Blake light tragedy among the scholars of war. Those ideas, they're very radical. Next poet here, Anne Sexton, a confessional poet who won the Pulitzer Prize for her book, Live or Die, 1967, good year. Themes of her poetry common to the genre are depression, struggling with suicide tendencies, suicidal tendencies, psychiatric problems, gender, and personal and familial intimacies. So she was you know, very transparent in uh, the things that she wrote about with her confessional poetry. She committed suicide when she was 45. Uh, some poems to read about her housewife, Courage, and Cinderella. And here is her poem, Her Kind, to give you a, a, a good idea. I really want to point this out. I've gone out a possessed witch, haunting the black air, braver at night, dreaming evil. I've done my hitch over the plain houses, light by light, lonely thing, twelve-fingered, out of mind. A woman like that is not a woman quite. I have been her kind. And rib crack, and my ribs crack where your wheels wind. A woman like that is not ashamed to die. I have been her kind. So she repeats this in her poem um, a lot, and you can see here how at the end she says, a woman like that is not ashamed to die, I have been her kind. And you can see this up on YouTube, uh, she actually reads it, and it's a very strong um, poem there. Sylvia Plath, another confessional poet, very well educated, lived in America and England, was married to poet Ted Hughes, but she also committed suicide at age 30. Um, I think she put her head in a gas oven uh, so you could see a lot of these confessional poets uh, committed suicide um, because, you know, the, the, the difficulties that you can read about in their life is definitely seen in their poems. Here's a picture of her on a stamp, commemorative issue there, 2012, just like some of the other ones, a forever stamp, forever remember her. Of her noted contributions to confessional poetry, there's a list here um, of the things that, that she did write, and you should take a look into those as we move along. So she went from writing conventional style poetry to a more confessional stance, and some of her, her poems to read are listed up here. And here's an excerpt from The Colossus. Scaling little ladders with glue pots and pails of Lysol, I crawl like an ant in mourning over the weedy acres of your brow to mend the immersed skull plates and clear the bald white tumult tumulty of your eyes. Very strong image given there. A blue sky out of Aristia arches above us, O Father, all by yourself. A lot of the ideas here are very personal, uh, very um, on point. Adrian Rich, post-conventional uh, poetry, personal poetry with a universal appeal. Um, she started in a traditional form but moved to a freer, less structured verse in snapshots of a daughter-in-law and thereafter. So one thing about Adrienne Rich, um, she's involved in women's rights, social justice, lesbian issues, extensive writing on various issues. Um, for my doctoral thesis, I actually used this book here of Woman Born um, before I even knew about her confessional poetry. I knew of her as a feminist writer, and uh, you know, it's just great to see a lot of overlap between the arts and the critical thinking. So some poems here to read are listed up here, and here is uh, an excerpt of Snapshots of a Daughter-in-Law. 
A thinking woman sleeps with monsters. The beak that grips her, she becomes a nature that sprung, lidded, still commodious steamer trunk of tempera and moors gets stuffed with it all, the mildwood orange flowers. The female pills the terrible breasts of bodicacia beneath the fox's heads and orchids. Um, two handsome women gripped in argument, each proud, acute, subtle. I hear scream across the cut glass and Majolica, the, like furies cornered from their prey, the argument and feminism, all the old knives that have rested in my back, I drive in yours, ma semblable, ma soeur. So very strong poetry here. Um, her, you know, she, she didn't uh, end her life, I believe, but her husband, he was a very prominent Harvard, I believe he was a Harvard economist. When he was 47, he, he drove up into the woods and shot himself. Um, and that, that was a surprise. Uh, but they were going through some issues, I believe, at that point, too. But the confessional poetry has a lot of this very, and post-confessional a bit here, a little different, has this, this um, transparency. So let's um, move on and take a look now at the drama. <laughs> 